Okay, perfect. Okay. And you were both registered nurses yes. in World yes, War II? Yes, we were. <laughs> <laughs> um, and where exactly were you in, in, during, during the war? Oh, and where? Before we went in the Army? Uh, yeah, sure, let's start well, there. Uh, we were both working in Philadelphia at different hospitals. Yeah, and one day the telephone rang. It was my sister telling me that she was joining the Army Nurse Corps. I hadn't thought about it. I really had no desire. I liked what I was doing. So I told her to give me time to get in touch with Washington, which I did. I knew they needed nurses desperately. Uh, so I told them that we were only thinking of joining only if we could stay together. No hesitation, we would always be together. So we joined. And once you, uh, once you joined, they kept you together? Oh yeah. Oh yeah, we, we were together, always together. together. Oh yeah. yeah. Uh, chief go? nurses weren't too fond of us because mm -hmm. they didn't have complete control of us and our religion didn't help. <laughs> so they weren't too fond. Oh, well, okay. <laughs> so you were a little bit rebellious. Uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, we had basic training at Fort Meade, Maryland. We had a nice sergeant. We made his life a living hell. And uh, the day we left, uh, he said to somebody else, that if he didn't kill the Levisky sisters, he'd go and kill himself. I mean, we were, we were mischievous, you know. Yeah. And we were an army material. Yeah. Well, I mean, it, it didn't seem like the Army, though. It was, you must remember, this is 65, 67 years ago, you know. It was a different ball game. I mean, we were quite young. Huh? I said we were quite young. Yeah, we were quite young, and it was an adventure. It really was an adventure, because we didn't know what to expect. I mean, here you're a civilian, they put you in boots, and they put you in a baggy pair of pants, and you're supposed to march, you know. I mean, well. <laughs> <Happy watch. laughs> well, what was your favorite part? Actually, I loved every minute of it. <laughs> I, I, I loved the army. I really did. Yeah. I, I mean, wasn't too fond. With all I our shenanigans, I really loved it. <laughs> no, I wasn't too fond of the army. I went in because of Ellen and what was happening. That that helped. But I, each day, I waited to get out, and I couldn't. And that was it. And my big regret mm -hmm. is I didn't stay in. Mm -hmm. I've always regretted mm -hmm. it. Yeah. yeah. And so, how does that uh, work with the two of you, knowing that I mean, you've you've been together for forever. I mean, uh, so having those different opinions. Well, I mean, you know, you you uh, you did the best you could. You know. Yeah. yeah. We were there for a purpose. I mean, we weren't there to have, have fun and games. We were there for a purpose. But uh, until we got acclimated, <laughs> and uh, actually until we came overseas. You know. Oh, uh, by the way, uh, before we went in, we had to have a physical training. You know. And uh, I was underweight. Yeah. And I also had a heart murmur. So they put me on limited service, which meant I could not go overseas, which didn't bother me, because if I couldn't go, I know she couldn't go. So that didn't bother me. And uh, as I told you, the nurse, chief nurses resented things. So one day when we were in Camp Lee, Virginia, having a Excellent time. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh it was. Yeah, the, the, we couldn't wait to get off duty to go to the officers' club where everybody was dancing and really enjoyed it. The chief nurse, oh, all the, we noticed all the bulletin board. Lieutenant Dorothy Levitsky, Lieutenant Ellen Levitsky scheduled to go overseas. Well, I knew they had made an error because I, I was a limited service. So I had all the papers and I went to to the chief nurse to tell her they had made an error. And she wouldn't even bother looking at the papers. She put them down and she said to me, I want you to go to barracks so-and-so and see Dr. So-and-so. Fine, I picked up the papers. I went to barracks so-and-so and saw Dr. So-and-so, handed him the papers, he put it down. It was a true story. He told me to walk there, I walked. Come back, he said, you're off limited service. That quickly. <laughs> didn't, so, it didn't bother checking my heart, nothing. We were off of the service. Wow. So then we were sent to Camp Dix. Where were they? Fort Dix. Fort Dix in uh, New Jersey, get more training, and then the ship came in. 
And uh, we were the first contingent of nurses to go directly to France. Most of them went to England, then to France. Wow. And so how does that yeah. make you feel, knowing that you were part of that, that first wave? Yeah, 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 we, yeah. Uh, okay. We, we, went, we went in a convoy of medical, in, 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 our ship was all medics. And uh, it took us 12, we said 12 days, somebody else says 13 days, so I don't know. I, well, I remember 12 I days. thought 12. Uh, yeah. yeah, but uh, <coughs> they were in Sherbrooke. And it, apparently, our advance party went to England, so they didn't know what to do with us. <laughs> so they put a lot of us out on detached service. Dorothy, Dorothy and I were with the 5th General. They had been in uh, England for about uh, two and a half years before they came to France. So they were, you know, we were, we um, yeah. worked there until our hospital was activated, and we had a large medical surgical tent hospital, the 164th General Hospital. Wow! And we were there for a couple of years. A couple of years, a year. A year. Yeah. yeah, we were there for a year. Time goes on. <laughs> yeah. And then you want to tell them anything? Um, we had one doctor anesthesiologist. They didn't have enough nurse anesthetists. We had uh, two Quonset huts, four table, operating tables on each side. So they needed nurse anesthetists. They needed somebody, you know, if you want like to join and learn it. So I uh, volunteered. Uh, Dorothy did, but she didn't like it. She quit. And Ethelian Penethol was in its infancy then. And. Of course, I didn't know nothing about drugs, but, you know, and nurses at that time did not do intravenuses. Mm. Different ball game, believe me. Our, but our specialty was nursing care. But anyhow, in three days, I was a certified <laughs> nurse, field trained nurse <laughs> anesthetist and scared to death. <laughs> you know, you're dealing with lethal drugs. Of course, you know. of course. Wow. Mm. And so, uh, I guess let's let's switch gears a little bit, and then we're going to come back to okay. to the to the history mm -hmm. of it all. Um, being here in Normandy, uh, seeing all of these things where you know people are holding this entire uh, historical monumental event in, in mm -hmm. such high regard, uh, what does that make you feel? What makes what brings you back here? Well, yeah, go ahead. Actually, I think what I don't know about anybody else, but when I left, I think I, a little piece of Normandy was in here. Yeah, yeah. I love to come. We come back every year. And I guess we've come back as long as we can, you know, you know. We come back to see the place, we come back for the people, yeah. It's just, uh, they're our friends, it's a family, yeah. And the people well, of this area, I mean, how they've accepted us, it's unbelievable. It's, uh, it, 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 it's actually unbelievable. What, what uh, personal experiences can you tell me about that, that uh, make it unbelievable for you? Well, have you ever been kissed by a bishop? <laughs> I haven't. <laughs> <laughs> we have. I mean, uh, uh, like Father Leonard, he, uh, he's so happy to see us. Of course, like I say, we're not mm -hmm. of his faith, but we go to Mass with, with the rest of them, and they make us so well. They make us we're feel people. like we've, we're uh, home, uh, uh, that we've come home. Yeah. It's, a, yeah, it's beautiful. It really is beautiful. I want to tell them about we were almost court-martialed. Yes. Oh. Yeah, tell them the story. Uh, <laughs> okay. uh, Dorothy was on night duty, and it was payday time. You had to sign vouchers. I don't know if you do what you can sign vouchers now, but we had to sign a voucher, and then the next day or so your check came to you. So she was on night duty, so I went to the, the patient to check tend to sign my voucher. Mm -hmm. So I said, let me sign Dorothy's voucher too. And the poor little guy said, you can't do it, a little corporal. And I said, yes, I can. She said, I'm not going to wake her up. Well, it went back and forth, back and forth. I signed the pay voucher. And somehow in Sherbourg, it was the discrepancy in hammering was picked up. So our colonel was alerted. Of course, he alerted the chief nurse, and she says, gotcha. <laughs> oh, she was gotcha. happy. Really? <laughs> I really got you. <laughs> and the next thing we know, somebody came tearing down to us and said, you girls are in trouble. You're going to have a summary court martial. What do we do? I said, I didn't do anything. I well, was sleeping. They didn't know, they didn't know what, we're, what it was about. But they knew that we were in trouble. So anyhow, we were told to be in, in front of the colonel's tent at such an hour. 
and not to digress, but back in the States in the 40s, vaudeville was very uh, popular. And there was a Hungarian act, two sisters. They called the Dolly Sisters. So when they were announced, they say the Dolly Sisters, they twine arms, and they come in kicking and singing, kicking and singing. So we're standing out there and saying, you know, we're going to go to jail. So, you know, we don't know I what's going to I didn't do anything. <laughs> so somebody bellers out, bring in the Levitsky sisters. So I looked at Dorothy, I said, oh, what the hell? So we twined arms. said, why not? So we went in <laughs> singing and dancing. <laughs> <laughs> it's a true story. <laughs> and the colonel, he almost fell on his chair. He was laughing so hard. And the Zek Arbiter looked like he was struck by lightning. And she was purple. Oh, oh she, she was purple. Yeah, she turned. <laughs> <laughs> and when he got there, our commanding officer, who was a doll, he was a, he got up and said, go back to your area. Case dismissed. So we didn't get court martialed. <laughs> Oh my God, yeah. Oh yeah. You know, the whole thing is, you know, it, 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 it's sometimes it's a little overwhelming, you know. It really is. I mean, we, we came over to do a job. We did our and, job. And the, the, you have to remember, they were 18 year old, but they were men, and you had to you had to take care of them. Yeah, yeah, that was the thing. And and did you get a sense of fulfillment for that? You know being able to, to contribute your skills to... Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. Of course, I mean, I, I would strictly put them to sleep and that was it. And Dorothy worked on the wards. Yeah, but I have to tell them, uh, you know, the battle will bulge and all that. We got all the patients and then things quieted down and then the war in Europe was over and the Germans were going to take our hospital. So they gave us two choices. We could either stay with the Army of Occupation, this is a true story, we could stay with the Army of Occupation or go to the CBI, China, Burma, India. Hell and I that night discussed what we really wanted to do and the next day we asked to see the sergeant, the colonel. He saw us. So I told him that I did not want the Army of Occupation nor did I want to go to the CBI. I wanted to go home and take piano lessons. He listened. I wanted to go home and take tap dancing lessons. And he listened, and about three or four weeks later, we were on an army train taking us to the staging area in Marseille to wait for the ship to take us to the CBI. <laughs> but fortunately, when we got on the ship, the war in Japan was over, so we got to go home. But while we were in Marseille, I, I wanted to tell you about uh, Someone had written a song. Do you want to hear the song? Oh, God. You want to sing it for me? <laughs> Every place we go, we have to sing the song. <laughs> Every, it's like a signature song. Right? <coughs> oh, oh, Mr. Mr. Truman, Truman, we have got our points. points. We, we are tired of living in, in these foreign joints. joints. We, we don't, don't want the CBI. Save but that poor the other guy. guy. Please, Please, Mr. Truman, why can't we go home? home? We, we have bet the Russians and we have crossed the Rhine. We are tired of vodka and drinking Moselle wine. We would like to fraternize, but I said, where we rise. So please, Mr. Truman, why can't we go home? We have conquered Berlin and we have conquered Rome. We have destroyed the master race, so why is there no shipping space? So please, Mr. Truman, why can't we go home? <laughs> Do you like that? I like it. <laughs> <laughs> now, anything else? Anything else? Uh, well, actually, do you mind telling us your your ages for the for the record? Me, I'm ninety one. Ninety one. Ninety four. Ninety four. You don't you don't look it at all. Well, actually, she always tries to tell everybody I'm older, but I'm really and truly younger. <laughs> no, 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 I'm ninety four. Yeah, yeah. The secret is to keep going. Don't sit. Keep going. And that's what and we if do. If you have a sister like that, believe me, you keep going. <laughs> no, after uh, 
after my husband died, uh, my sister's home, we live in Milford, Delaware, my sister's home here, my home was over here. <clears throat> and I remember my mother reading a book, A House is Not a Home. It was no longer a home, it was a house. So I asked Ellen if I could build onto her home and move in with her, but she was agreeable. So she, she does the cooking. I work in the yard. We, we have a good we have, we have a good support group. We do. Of course, Daddy and I have nobody. It's just Daddy and I. And that's it. Yeah, but but then we, she has no children. I have no children, and, and that's why we come over every year and do whatever we want to do. Yeah. You have each other. Huh? You have each other. We have each other. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And how long? Uh, or not how long? Obviously, I know how long you've been together. But uh, you know, how, how is that uh, relationship? I mean, do you find yourselves in rocky situations over this? Uh, we have some days. Oh yeah, we're normal. We're my normal people. Yeah. But she has enough of me. She'll say very. I'm going to my desk. So I know. I mean, I don't know. What have I done? You know. But no, no. We we interact. Uh, we've always been close. We've mm -hmm. always been close. And the surprising thing, we are two different people. I mean, our likes and everything were different, but we get along. She's my sister. Yeah. You're stuck with me. <laughs> You're stuck with me. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, okay, going back to the historical piece of it, um, what was the most memorable event? Uh, while you were here, while the war was happening, what, what stands out in your mind as that, wow, I will never forget that? Uh, I think it's one patient I had. Like I say, um, Pentothal was a drug you didn't fool around with. And, uh, we were taught the mix. We had to mix our own drug. It was a powder form then, and then we were taught to put the gas machine on, you know, and monitor the patient and everything. And everything was fine. I never had any problems. But they brought this one guy in, and I started explaining to him, you know, what I was going to do and everything. And you try to, you know, put him at the ease and everything. And I start the intravenous, and I start the penicillin, and I, you, you count back from 100, they haven't come back. If they hit 96, I mean, that was good, you know. This guy's counting, getting down to 80, and I'm putting the uh, setting penicillin, and I called for the, ca the uh, captain, and he you know, came over and he said, give it to him, you know. He got down to 32. <laughs> And I thought, my God, I'll, I'll, I'll kill him. So and he finally fell asleep. And uh, he didn't wake up for a couple of days. And they, I, they, they came, when he woke up, I mean, once they left the, the operating room, I, I was done. I, I didn't know where they went and what they did. I didn't, I didn't know. They're post-operative care. And I was told not to go around the uh, this, such, such a ward because I don't know if I should say it or not. Anyhow, this guy woke up wild, <laughs> wild. He was going to kill the little son of a bitch that put him to sleep. <laughs> he got out the night before and got tanked up on Calvados. And that was a nightmare. That, that mm -hmm. to me, I was so upset. I was so frightened. Yeah. You know, mm -hmm. here you're, 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 you've got a, a human person you're, you're working on. I was scared to death. I don't think I'll ever, ever forget that, but I always hoped for the rest of my life I'd never, never meet up with that man. Hmm. Yeah. And you? Do you have anything like that? Well, uh, as I said, they were 18-year-old men and you took care of them. One in particular stayed longer than most patients and we became friends and we were friends for 65 years. He died two years ago. He's a reason we're yeah. here. Uh, huh? He's the reason we're here. He's the reason we're here. Oh, yeah. Uh, he, he was an 82nd Airborne. Well, you know, we were nurses. We had nothing to do with about, um, about the 10 years ago. Yeah. He called me at home and wanted to know if Ellen and I would join the 82nd Airborne uh, 407 Club. Why not? That's why we're here today, because of the 82nd. Mm -hmm. C-47. 
of C-43. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> anyway, we, jo we joined him, and it was because of him. And yeah. his ashes, they brought his ashes back, to, and we had a ceremony. In fact, we had a ceremony the other day uh, at his uh, tomb. Mm. And what was his name? Bill Tucker. Bill Tucker, and do you know where he was from? Yeah, Massachusetts. Massachusetts. Yeah. yeah. He was with the 82nd Airborne. Well, yeah. see, he, 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 as I said, the 18-year-old, but he came home, he went to school, became a, a lawyer, and he was friendly with the John Kennedy, our president. And so when they, after John Kennedy was elected, he, George was, uh, Bill, was a... Uh, you know, uh, ICC. Huh? ICC. Oh, yeah, he was in the International Commerce Commission. And so I was working in Wilmington, he was in Washington, and he was called back and forth for five of But he was doing what I was doing, and we became friends. We were friends. Yeah. That's great. That's great. Mm -hmm. And so uh, what's the driving force um, to keep bringing you back here? I think that for me, it's just being here. It, it's because all these people that were in the, the they're, they're family. Uh, we feel very like we're family. We hear from them all the time. Yeah. yeah. And another thing, we were, our hospital was, uh, uh, we always said La Haye de Poi, but they tell us it was Bolville. Bolville. Mm -hmm. But we always, yeah. uh, and uh, we came across a picture. It was VE Day, and uh, they had a V. Uh, they had a parade. So somebody in our, our outfit snapped this picture, and so I don't know how we got hold of it. Somebody I know, it I, I had it. Somebody sent it to us. So we're taking it back to La Haye Point uh, tomorrow. Yeah. 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 And Fran I, I, Francine I, is, uh, is taking mm -hmm. us over uh, there to take this picture. We think it should be in their archives. And I have a postcard that I must have bought while I was here, but I don't know why, but I bought it, so I'm giving them back the postcard of La Haye de Puy. Before the war. <laughs> Uh -huh. Before the war. Yeah. That's great. So that, 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 so we're going back there to more. Uh -huh. Our hospital was in a big cow pasture. Uh -huh. And it was a tent, you said? Uh -huh. All tent. Uh -huh. What was that like uh, in terms of the working environment? Uh, how would you compare that to something that you would probably see in today's military? Oh, no comparison. <laughs> uh, <laughs> pr primitive. Uh -huh. Primitive. But you didn't think of it. You didn't think of it. Uh, uh, you, you were there to, to do a job, and that's what it But you didn't think of the building or a tent, or our tent uh, that we had to sleep in had, with no had, mattress, no, you know? We had a folding cot, uh, mm -hmm. no, uh, no mattress, folding cot, one blanket. In fact, it was so cold, we used to wear our flannel pajamas. And we have pictures of our flannel pajamas sticking out of our uniforms. <laughs> and. Uh, uh, a, one pillow without a pillowcase, and that was it. Yeah, but it was our home, and then we were there. You were young. And we were young. <laughs> You're, You're still young. Yeah, anything. <laughs> You're young. Oh, oh, I burn up two tents. <laughs> I'm sorry. I burn up two tents. Oh, you burnt two tents? <laughs> How did you do that? Well, it was, it, it, Normandy in the winter is damp. I mean, it goes right through you. I got off early for some reason, so the girls weren't uh, back yet, so I thought I would, uh, oh, yeah. you know, warm up the tent. So we had, every day they'd give you a little bucket with a rational call that had last for 24 hours. So I found some papers around, I put it in, and I put the call around, and I took a bottle of gin, and, <laughs> and I threw in the match. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> the first time they didn't know, you know, what was, it was an accident. Yeah, but tell them what happened there after the second one. I squeal, one of the girls squealed on me, and they told us no more tents. If another, no, this is it, if anything else, there will be four cots laid out on the cobblestones. No tent. No tent. <laughs> Wow. <laughs> and and uh, another one reason, one of the good reasons why we come back every year, the people around here have been wonderful to us. I mean, they, they seem I tell like, you it's overwhelming. Yeah. Not only the priest and bishop, but the, the uh, citizens. people yeah. like you. Yeah, like you're happy to see us. Absolutely. And you thank us for being here. Yeah. Absolutely.
Oh. And I do thank you both. For well, that's what makes you feel better. Like I said, you keep thank you, thank you. But well, the way we feel, like I say, we had a job to do. And we, we did, did it. We our job. We went home. And, yeah. <laughs> here's, uh, here's a little side topic, and, and if you don't want to talk about it, that's fine. But, but you and I both know how GIs are. And, uh, and you two were young, attractive nurses that were, oh, that were handling yeah. all the yeah, young yeah. guys. But no fraternizing. <laughs> no fraternizing. No, I, I know the policy, but I'm just saying, how did that interaction, you know, what, what kind of things did you did you have to deal with on a day-to-day -day basis that were just hilarious to you? <laughs> well, um... Oh, 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 tell them about the time you were in the... Uh, in the Ger right? And the Germans came. Oh. Oh. Well, it, it, there was a lot of men. <laughs> yeah, there was a lot of men, and there was a policy. Well, you know, they were never there sta they, permanently. I mean, while they were there, you enjoyed each other. They're gone, it's over. You know, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's like a big box of chocolates. <laughs> Anyhow, uh, uh, I was going with the um, infantry officer, a station in Corderay. And things are slowing down a little bit. <coughs> but in the Jersey Islands, there were girls. Yeah. Yeah. You know, and we were right across from Jersey Island. So we were, uh, uh, there were two of us, Mar Bo uh, Angel and I went yeah. to pick us up in the Jeep. We never went through the front. We always went through the bar bar. <laughs> you know, the guards are there. You mm -hmm. have a nice bottle of gin and they'd, they'd hold the water. But they'd say, what time will you be back? You know, he said so. So when the, and we went through and we were, we went there and we were you know with the jukebox and we were sitting and, drink, and having a drink and talking having fun and the alert went over on the Germans were breaking through so I think there were five or six nurses there so they took us upstairs and put us in closets and they threw blankets on and said don't make a sound and there was a lot of gunfire. And we were scared to death. Mm -hmm. And here I'm thinking, my sister, my sister. So anyhow, they didn't. We didn't get out of the closet until about four or five o'clock in the morning. And of course, we couldn't get back to the hospital because the roads were closed. They were all blocked. So we got back to the hospital. But meanwhile, they had called the hospital to let them know that we were and we were okay. Mm -hmm. So they took us back, and, and they, everybody was, you know, came rushing. Are you are you all right? My sister wasn't among them, and I kept saying, where's Dorothy? And somebody said, she's back in the nurse's area. So I went back, and I'm yelling, Dorothy, I'm okay, Dorothy, you know. And she came out of the tent, and she was crying. And she looked at me, and she said, what in the hell was I supposed to tell your mother, a Jewish girl, being a German war prisoner, and she took her skinny fist and said, oh, pow. <laughs> That was my reception. Welcome home. What, what could I take? Tell our mother. I mean, oh my God. <laughs> wow. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and so, where where exactly was that? I mean, you, you you went under the wire to to what location for that? I mean, uh, well, on the other side of the jeep waiting for us. Ah. Uh, <laughs> uh, yeah, there were a few a few females so. No, we always wanted, yeah. <laughs> but you didn't go out with anybody unless they had transportation. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that was the key. Yeah, 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 yeah. If they had transportation, okay, you would go out for the yeah. evening. Uh. <laughs> I had a date with this, uh, this officer from the South, and uh, we just didn't get along. I mean, I didn't get along too well with him. I just didn't uh, care for his skill. You know, but anyway, I got out of his transportation. We were coming back. And I'm standing there with a helmet lining on and my fatigues on, the boots. And he said to me, hold it, Dorothy, don't move. And I looked, I went, he said, you're beautiful. And I knew what I looked like. I wasn't <laughs> So I go and I'm crying, and I said, Ellen, I, I hate to hurt him, but I said, I can't go out with him anymore. I just can't. I said, I'll take care of him. <laughs> 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 yeah, she had made another date with him, you know. So uh, I, I, he was at the, uh, at the uh, we had a little rinky tink officers club. She was standing outside, so I went out and I introduced myself to Dorothy, just dresses down. And I was trying to tell him, you know, there's people in me, you 
this chemistry, you know, this big, you know, I'm, I'm going on it real quick, you know, and I'm looking at it, and I'm looking at those big soul balls, looking at me, and I'm thinking, oh, no. And then finally he says, I do declare I think I had the wrong sister. And she comes in and tells me. <laughs> I did. I, I, you know, I felt so bad. But I went out and once. When I got home, I said, "Please, don't just don't come back here anymore. Just please, don't come back." But here. But had the nerve to come and tell me I was the wrong I sister. Now I'm stuck with them. <laughs> <laughs> but I took care of it. <laughs> Is there anything else that you'd like to say? Any any uh, wonderful stories that, that come to mind that you're just like, you know what? Well, we want to tell this. As story. long as we can, we'll be back. Yeah. When it comes a time we can't oh. come back, that's it. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Yeah. I mean, people are so good to us. And so, you know, it, it, it's unbelievable. You and, 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 and he, you know, they bring their children to, to thank us for being here. I mean, it's... Uh, yeah. The only, uh, truthfully, the only thing really upsets me here, I'm fine, I'm fine, until I get to Omaha Beach. That's yeah. cemetery. It gets killed. Yeah. Yeah. We go every year to get our uh, French flags and our American flag, and uh, it, it, it just kills me. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think it's the only thing that's truthfully. Uh, but we're happy that we could do what we did, and we did. That's the only thing that I, thank God, I came over. Yeah. That's the. Yeah. Well, we're all very happy that you yeah. did what you did. Also. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Um, so how have you held, how have you held this together for so long? How have you, yeah. You know, the amazing thing is, it, really looking back, um, Dorothy, we came back, Dorothy went to work at the Veterans Hospital, I got married. <laughs> <laughs> but I still went to, I worked at, uh, in, the, in the, our local hospital. We never talked. Not never, no, no, it was over. Not a word, never mentioned. The first place, I was his first lieutenant. My husband was a staff sergeant. You didn't, you didn't talk to him. <laughs> <laughs> uh -uh. No, I mean, there was a little, I don't know what it was with him. I mean, he didn't like to hear anything about it. And not only that, you, we, no, you didn't talk mm -hmm. until, I think it was around 04. When, the great regeneration came out, you know, mm -hmm. and then, you know, but otherwise we never. We, ne we never talked about it. We, it was alone. over. When we were alone, we never talked. Mm -hmm. Well, actually, that, that brings up an interesting question because um, it's pretty common knowledge that, by and large, the younger generation in the United States doesn't seem to have a clear picture or understanding mm -hmm. of, of what's mm -hmm. Well, we were asked uh, uh, quite a bit after, in 04, if we speak to the uh, the school kids, the seniors and everything, they didn't even know Mr. Truman. They didn't know Franklin Roosevelt. No. They didn't know anything. And it's like, uh, like in fact, uh, we, we spoke to this one class, and the uh, principal came out and said, how'd you make out? I said, I think they thought we came out of Mars, you know. The way they looked at us, like, you know, they don't get it. No. They don't get it. It, it, it's different over here. And like one kid said, my grandfather was here you know, in France. He said he never talked about it. And, and then when they say, say, why are you talking about it? Well, they'd say, grandfather? Yeah. <laughs> wow. I, I think <gasps> it's, uh, it's lacking in their education. Yeah. Well, actually, that, that was kind of my question is, um, you know, here, it seems like every French person that I've interviewed about this, this is something that they told every generation. Do you know why? We came here. They're the ones that bore the brunt. But we came here, and then we went home. Mm -hmm. I, to me, that's Yeah, that was it. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. Do you yeah. think, though, that if, uh, if these war stories had, had been more circulated earlier on, that maybe our education on that would be a little higher? Mm -hmm. oh. I, I, I think, what I think, what? parts of it's too painful. It's too painful. Uh, uh, yes, you don't talk about it. You don't, you don't. Yeah. Like us, uh, we go, uh, uh, wherever we're asked, to, in fact, the 23rd, we're, uh, they asked, we got to speak in front of the uh, uh, Red Hatters, you know. 
our age, and, and not quite our age group, but the I mean, older people, uh, we go for the lighter things, the funny things. The lighter part. We don't see that, 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 that we shall never forget. You know, you it's, know, it's but why make you miserable? You know. Yeah. So I, I think it's another thing. These kids, these people, parents, since the fathers didn't tell their children, it's too, it was too painful.